Welcome to episode 7 of True Crime and Sense. Today, we're going to be talking about a little girl that went missing in western France. Before we get into the case, let's take a real quick look at our sins. Obviously, Clara is going to have her baby in this episode. I told you in the last episode that I'd picked out the names Logan and Whitney for the baby. I won't spoil the surprise. I'll let you learn what I named the baby when we get there. Clara is also going to learn how to make key lime pie in this episode, which is a recipe we can add to the bakery. And now let's get into the case. In April 1922, Pauline Picard was only two years old. She was playing on her family farm in Brittany, France. When she suddenly vanished, her parents immediately contacted the local police. The police rounded up many volunteers to help search for the missing girl. Once the group had finished searching the family farm, they began searching the surrounding village. As time passed and no trace of little Pauline was found, the family began to lose hope. After all, how long can a two-year-old survive on her own? A few weeks after Pauline went missing, the parents received wonderful news. Their daughter had been found. The police gave a photograph of the foundling to Pauline's mother, and she instantly recognized her daughter. The Picards traveled from Brittany to Cherbourg to collect their daughter. After assuming their daughter had died, it must have been wonderful to be reunited with her. But almost immediately, the Picards began to notice differences between this girl and the Pauline they remembered. Pauline didn't seem to have any memory of her parents, her eight siblings, or anything that would have been familiar to her. They also noticed severe differences in her personality. The strangest thing of all was the sudden language barrier. The Picards spoke a language called Breton, a Celtic language spoken only in Brittany. Pauline seemed to no longer understand the language. The doctors were able to explain all this. She had been through a traumatic experience. She had some kind of form of amnesia. In her time away from them, Pauline had become malnourished, and no one could explain how Pauline had traveled 200 miles from Brittany to Cherbourg. By car, it was a three and a half hour trip, so the two-year-old had clearly been through something. Pauline's mother seemed especially unsure if the little girl was her daughter. The more time she spent with her, the more it seemed like she wasn't Pauline. Pauline's father insisted that this had to be their daughter, so they took her home, hoping that with time, she would recover from whatever she'd been through. Though they did initially have doubts, Pauline seemed to quickly readjust to her life in Brittany. Her siblings and neighbors accepted her back with loving arms. Everyone rejoiced that Pauline had been recovered. On May 27th, the month after Pauline vanished, a cyclist found the tiny body of a small child only 800 meters from the family's farm. The child's clothes were found neatly folded beside the body, which was missing its hands and feet. The clothing was easily identified as being the same clothes Pauline had been wearing when she disappeared. A skull found near the body was examined. Initially, it was believed that the skull belonged to the child. However, it was ultimately determined that the skull belonged to an adult man. This meant that the child was also missing its head. And this meant that all of the body parts they could use to establish identity were missing. Everyone assumed that the body belonged to Pauline Picard. Who else could it belong to? She was the only child who had gone missing. But if the body was that of Pauline, then who was the little girl living with the Picard family? Sadly, since she wasn't a member of the Picard family, the little girl had to be taken away. The Picard family had grown incredibly close to her. It must have felt like they were losing two daughters at once. Still, they shipped the little girl back to Cherbourg. She was given a new name by the Picards. There seems to be some debate as to what this name was. I saw her new name listed in one place as Louise Marcel Pauline, and somewhere else listed as Marie Louise Pauline. For the rest of the video, I'll simply refer to her as Louise. Upon returning to the orphanage, Louise cried and longed to return to the Picards. She'd begun to see them as her family. Now that they knew this little girl wasn't Pauline, the family speculated that she was actually younger than Pauline. They based this assessment on the fact that her language skills weren't as developed as the actual Pauline. When Louise had come to live with the Picards, she only spoke in random sounds, a sort of gibberish from a child just learning how to speak. Some people think that this gibberish might have actually been words in another language, and that little Louise might have been the child of immigrants. No one knows if she was abandoned or if her family died. Unfortunately, there would be no happy ending for little Louise. Once sent back to the orphanage, she would die of the measles in 1924. Though some accounts do state that she was adopted before she died, others say she died in the orphanage. At the time of her death, she would have only been about three or four years old. No one knows exactly what happened to Pauline either. 
No one was ever convicted of a crime. The initial theory was that Pauline had wandered off and died of exposure or been attacked by a wild animal. Though even at the time, this belief was quickly dismissed. The exact details were too strange. Whatever happened to Pauline, it was probably foul play. Supporting this is the fact that her body was found incredibly close to her family farm. That exact spot had already been searched. During the police's initial search for Pauline, when Pauline had first gone missing, there were many people out looking for her, and they started at the farm. Volunteers swore that they had checked that area. Furthermore, the location of the body was near enough to the Picard's home that Pauline would have probably been familiar with the area. It's unlikely that she would have gotten lost in that area, and since there were people out searching for her, it should have been fairly easy to find her if she was that close to home. Despite the authorities' initial assertion that she must have simply gotten lost and died of exposure, it seems unlikely. There are a few pretty solid theories about who could have ultimately hurt Pauline. Back then, a lot of people believed it was a local man named Yves Martin. When Louise had originally come to Brittany, everyone believed she was Pauline. She looked so much like Pauline that even her siblings, her parents, and those close to her, including her doctor, had been convinced. Yet Yves Martin suspiciously questioned her parents, asking how could they possibly know that this was their daughter. One story states that when he saw Louise, the color drained from his face and he began to laugh uncontrollably. Another story states that upon seeing Louise, he shouted, God help me, I am guilty, before running away. I also found accounts that say he did both. After he finished laughing, he said those words and ran. The Picards didn't think too much of it at the time because they were focusing on reconnecting with their recently returned daughter and helping Louise readjust to life in Brittany. The police would never get the chance to question Eve. He would check himself into a mental institution. It's said that Eve Martin suffered from a brain injury a few years before. Some chalk his strange behavior up to that injury. Another suspect is a man named Christophe Caramel. He was an umbrella salesman who sometimes worked as a farmhand on the Picard farm. He had breakfast with the Picards on the morning of Pauline's disappearance. It's said that he told Pauline on that very morning that she was going to come with him. Police ultimately decided that he was unlikely to have been involved because of timing, giving him something of an alibi. Though, possibly because this happened so long ago, I couldn't find a good explanation as to why the police ultimately cleared him. Martel would later tell a newspaper that he had witnessed the murder of Pauline. He claimed that a relative of the Picard family had been abusing Pauline. He stated that this relative was a recluse named Ronge Remorphy. Though many people assume that Martel made this up, possibly because the name sounds so fake. Though considering the state of journalism at the time, it's possible that the newspaper could have made up this story to sell papers. It seems there were a lot of people who would sometimes work for the Picard family. One of these people might have become a little too close to Pauline, if you get my meaning. One newspaper even went so far as to accuse the father of harming Pauline. They claimed he was prone to violent outbursts. Some people find it suspicious that Pauline's father seemed so ready to accept Louise as his daughter. It seemed his wife had a lot more reservations than he did. Though most accounts, it seems that the Picards genuinely wanted their daughter back. If given the option, they probably would have been willing to adopt little Louise too. Over the years, a lot of people have questioned how the Picards could mistake a perfect stranger for the daughter they raised for two years. Some people say that this was probably a side effect of their grieving. Perhaps in their grief, they were so desperate to have Pauline back, they would have done anything to bring her back. It's worth noting that Louise really hadn't been with the Picard family for very long when they began to question if she was really Pauline. It's also worth noting that literally everyone who saw the girl and knew Pauline thought she was Pauline. The two girls must have looked eerily similar. Several questions surround this crime, not just what happened to the actual Pauline. Despite their efforts, police couldn't figure out who Louise actually was. Her true identity and parentage remains lost to history. The skull found near Pauline's body was also never identified. No one knows who it belonged to, how it got there, or what happened to the rest of the body. Some speculate that there may have been a serial killer loose in Brittany, though it seems unlikely that someone would target both an adult man and a little girl. Others think the skull might have been all that was left of a man who had a run-in with wild animals. Okay, so that's the mystery for today. A lot of people compare this story to the story of Bobby Dunbar, a mystery that I've already covered for this channel if you're interested in watching. I can't help but feel for the family involved in this case. There are two parents who lost their two-year-old daughter, eight siblings who never got to see their sister again, and then there's little Louise, 
who was accepted into the Picard family only to have to return to an orphanage. The Picards had to give her up, and she had to give them up. It must have been a very difficult situation to be in. So, now that you've heard all of the details, who do you think is responsible? Could it have been a wild animal, or was it someone else? Maybe even someone really close to home. And now that we've gotten through the aspects of the case, we can turn to something a little bit more fun and get back to the story of Clara and Kyle. So Clara had her baby in this episode, and it was a little boy, and we named him Logan, and it really surprised me because I was totally expecting it to be a girl. And then her and Kyle decided to go ahead and have a second child, which also surprised me because I wasn't planning on introducing another baby until a little bit later. So this time, if she has a little boy, I'm going to call him Scott, and if it's a girl, it's still going to be Whitney. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really help this channel out. And if you liked this case, be sure to come back next time for our next true crime case. In the next episode, we'll also find out if Clara is having another girl or a boy. In the meantime, why don't you put in the comment section whether you think it's going to be Scott or Whitney that we have next time around. I think the trickiest thing from here on out is going to be figuring out how to take care of two kids while trying to run this bakery. I would imagine that at some point we're going to have to hire a lot of babysitters. You can see that I actually took Logan to the bakery, but it wasn't easy to take care of him while being there. There's not really a spot for him. I'm probably going to have to put a baby bed or two actually in the bakery if I plan on taking the kids there from now on. And I'm always going to have to deal with the fact that the customers want to hold him. I'll probably just stick with the babysitter though. I just feel like that'll be a lot easier to deal with. It kind of changes things a little bit. I had hoped that this bakery would give Clara a chance to be around her kids more often than a restaurant job would. But at this point, I'm not really sure that will be the case. But you know, sometimes Sims is just like life and you have to adapt to whatever's going on. So we'll figure it out.